Ladies, gentlemen, and herodrum of all ages, when it comes to Season 6 and the Vessel of Hatred expansion, one of the biggest new additions to the game is a brand new evergreen activity, one that is meant to be useful and included in your journey playing the game, all the way from efficient leveling completely up until your build and character is essentially near perfected and completed. This activity is extremely fast paced once you are inside. There are no real breaks in the middle other than like in between runs entirely, and it is relatively easy to take part in once you realize how it works and how to do it properly. The main thing though really is the rewards. This has the potential to be one of the highest rewarding activities in the game for the time spent, but that potential is somewhat gated behind specific items which are called tributes. These alter the way that an Undercity run will work, it sets it to a specific wing which is one of its variations, each wing has its own aesthetics and its own unique end boss, which are by the way some of the coolest bosses in the game so that does make a difference, but these also add bonus rewards at the end for a successful run, ranging from bonus experience to even a chance at mythic uniques dropping from this activity. They also give you access to the bargain option, which lets you exchange gold or materials to guarantee some results for end rewards, such as guaranteed skill ranks on armor or passive skill ranks on amulets. Essentially, this just gives you a method of target farming for specific affix archetypes on gear, which means long term, this will be an extremely sought after activity to accomplish the goals that most players will have at various points points in the game. All that said, let's dive into everything you need to know about this activity to get the most out of it, including why you really want to do it to begin with by discussing the rewards in a bit more detail later on. First things first, and let's talk about the activity itself. Karas Undercity is unlocked through the Vessel of Hatred campaign itself. You will get a look into the sort of area of this as part of the campaign quite early, and afterwards it will unlock the side quest chain that properly um, actually unlocks the Undercity as a permanent activity. You can engage with the Undercity before you finish the quest line, but the tribute system isn't unlocked until afterwards, which is what a large portion of the actual rewards for this activity are tied to. So if you want to do Undercity, I heavily recommend going through this quest line before you go too deep into it for that exact reason, especially as it will bring you through the Undercity, through the quest line, through each wing and each boss individually, just sort of as part of the process. Moving on then, what should you expect to find inside? Well, once you enter, a timer will start playing on the top right of your screen and a bar with different tiers will show up nearby. This bar represents your reward level. You gain points towards filling this bar by killing any enemy within the activity, but you get large chunks of points specifically from the braziers that you see on your minimap. You walk over and interact with these and one of a couple of things will happen. Either they will spawn a bunch of enemies and they will all be marked on the minimap, meaning that you have to kill every one of them for the brazier to count as complete, or it will spawn a bunch of enemies, but only mark like one or two elites on your minimap, in which case your objective is just to kill those two marked enemies and then it will be counted as complete, and it will give you the points towards the rewards. This will be marked on your map the moment you enter each floor, all the braziers, and these are your main objectives to clear out before you move on to the next floor. You can always move to the next floor of your run whenever you want to, even if you haven't done any braziers the second that you reach the portal, but if you leave the braziers undone, you just won't reach maximum reward. As you gain reward points, you will go up to different tiers of reward from 1 to 4. Tier 1 is required for a successful run to begin with, everything above that just gives increased rewards at the end of the activity. The other main thing to be aware of hidden here are the afflicted enemies. There are afflicted regular enemies that give super tiny amounts of bonus time to the timer when you kill them. Lesser afflicted are elites that you can find usually in packs of two, and generally these will give you around eight seconds each by default, with an extra bump of time if you defeat both of the ones in a pack together. Then there are also greater afflicted, and these are actually just essentially bosses that you will occasionally find within the activity, and these have a ton of health but reward around 30 30 seconds of bonus time when you kill them by default. There are also afflicted structures that you can find on occasion, which give bonus time when you destroy them too. The numbers that I've given you here though are a little bit uh, hazy though, because a big part of the tributes and bargain system is that it will change both the base timer and the time regained from afflicted enemies, but these are their sort of base values. Unlike the braziers, the afflicted enemies will only show up on your minimap if you get within a certain range of them, so generally your path through each floor will be defined to begin with by the braziers, and then you will adjust it to pick up any afflicted enemies that you see along the path. Anytime that you can create a situation where you are both completing a brazier event and killing afflicted enemies is the most efficient way to tackle this activity. If you can do that, you should do that, it'll make your runs better. This both progresses your rewards and gives you additional time towards the run at the same time. Generally speaking, if you complete every brazier that exists within your run, including the greater brazier that will take a bit more killing, you will reach full rewards within that run. As 
well, each time that you progress to a new floor, you also gain around 30 seconds added back onto your timer. When you reach the end of your run, it will culminate in a boss fight floor. The floor with the boss will turn the timer off so that no longer matters, you no longer have time pressure. Now it is simply kill the boss or be killed by them. Can you defeat the boss or not? If you die, you simply respawn and can do it again, but the boss will obviously be at full health. But if you kill the boss, the run will be complete. You get all of your rewards, including everything from your tribute and your bargain too. It's also worth mentioning that the treasure goblins that spawn in here are unique enemies called portal pranksters. They cause a bit of chaos, but if you can kill them, they will add an extra chest of loot at the end of the Undercity activity. And this is actually one of the best ways to get tributes if you're looking for more to make your Undercity runs better. And you probably should be looking for more of these for reasons that we will be talking about in a moment. As well, like the Artificer's Pit activity, once you are inside the Karast Undercity, you cannot change any of your skill points or your Paragon points, your gear or your class specialization options, and you cannot leave the area until the run is done unless you want the zone to just shut itself down and close early. That said, now that we have dove fully into the activity itself, let's talk about the tributes and bargain system and how this modifies the activity and the rewards. There are a fair number of tributes available, and these have a drop chance from pretty much everything that you can do in the game once you have unlocked them by finishing the quest line for the Undercity to begin with. For the most part, these can be split into four major categories, experience gain, legendary item drops, rune drops, and unique drops, to show examples of one at each rarity, with rarities of course deciding the difficulty of the run. The first is the Tribute of Growth. This gives bonus experience at the end of a run. It has the same starting time as default, but it does give you a 15% time bonus penalty from both floor transitions and killing afflicted enemies, as well as a 20% penalty to potion drop percentage as well. Then there is the Tribute of Harmony. This gives you multiple runes as a guaranteed drop reward at the end of the run, and this is the best source of farming runes in the game for the most part, but this also reduces the starting time of the actual event to 75 seconds. It adds a 25% time bonus penalty from afflicted enemy killing, and a 30% potion drop chance penalty as well. Then there is the Tribute of Radiance, and this gives guaranteed ancestral legendary drops at the end of the run, and of course, ancestral items are going to be a really big part of the end game this time around especially, and the cost for this reward is going down to a 60 second start timer, 35% time bonus penalty from afflicted and floor change, and the potion drop chance goes down by 40% as well. The final tribute then is Ascendance. This gives you multiple uniques at the end of your run, with an increased chance of mythic uniques as well. This is the toughest of all of these, of course, to actually complete. It gives you only 45 seconds as a starting timer, 50% time bonus penalty on the afflicted and the floor change, and 50% potion drop chance penalty too, which makes the actual survival harder as well. So this creates just a significantly harder run, but does offer some pretty hefty rewards in response. And it's worth noting there is also ones that will give you torment boss actual summon material drops once you reach the torment difficulties as well. Then we have the bargains, and this is a much more varied system, but it lets you have a reasonable amount of control over one part of the items that drop at the end at the cost of either currency or resources depending on what the devs decided the value of the bargain is, such as guaranteed passive skill ranks on an amulet being super, super expensive, but there are quite a few of these, and that one is obviously very good. Bargains don't seem to make the run harder or easier as well, they only change the actual rewards that you get at the end to give you more control over what you get. Essentially, to put this whole thing simply, Undercity, if you have the tribute that you want and can afford the bargain that you're after as well, has a high chance of giving you a good chunk of genuinely useful equipment for yourself and your build and upgrades for what you're using. It lets you target farm general gear in a way that most activities don't. It lets you target farm specific affixes on legendaries or even specific uniques for your class or otherwise. And the only real question is whether you are strong enough to complete the run on your chosen difficulty tier with the tributes. This activity is relatively simple to grasp at a glance, and it has a lot of reward for engaging in it. So I'd highly recommend that you at least get started on the quest line so you can unlock it all if you haven't done so yet, because this is totally worth doing. That just about does it for today then everyone, an introduction and guide to the Kurast Undercity activity new to the game with the Vessel of Hatred expansion. I hope you've enjoyed this and hopefully it helps you out in season six and beyond. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next Next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is uh goodbye.